Hey, hello today and habari to everyone in the world. I would like to thank y'all for tuning in to Soul Food Therapy. First of all, hey, give us some likes on www.bantufm.com. Hey, look out for great things from Blackbird. The album will be coming out soon. So be watching out for that in the new year. Also be watching out for the Soul Food Therapy and Mama Rose website. We'll be selling some of these delicious uh, treats to some of y'all out here around the world, uh, mostly in the uh, America area. But we thank you for your contributions and everything to our radio network and everything. Now, today, uh, it's been a second or two. I've been kind of under the weather. But today, I want to talk to y'all about something that all of us have been through in life. And some of us do better at coping with it than others. And it's something that we learn have to learn how to cope with. And some of us have, has, uh, have learned how to cope with it uh, the hard way. You know, we don't have a lesson book on how life goes. But today we're talking about how to cope with, we're talking about the effects of a breakup or a divorce. The effects of a breakup or divorce and how to deal with it. And it's hard dealing with those things. It's hard to even talk about those things sometimes, especially when you're going through it. Um, it, it, it hits you in your heart. You know, it paralyzes you. You know, we'll talk about some of those issues. Also, we're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna talk about being healthy. It's, this is a healthy issue to talk about. So, hey, let's talk about healthy food. We're going to go into an entree today called shashuka. And we're going to uh, talk about roasting eggplants, you know, as, as a side for this dish. All right, without further ado, hey, let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about the effects. And let's talk about, hey, love is one of the most wonderful things God has blessed us with. Um... And we're not just talking about uh, love between a man and a woman. You know, we're talking about uh, brotherly love, godly love. I mean, just the word love period is just great. You know, being able to spread yourself to everyone else in the world and be selfless uh, with your emotions are great. But there comes a time where uh, you get hurt, man, and it, it almost kills you you feel like it's like oh like you're not gonna live again and you might not want to admit it but it happens to you and you just feel like man how can i deal with you know what i'm going through at this moment you know whether we want to admit it especially us men whether we want to admit it or not you know because we want to play like we're so tough and we're so hard and stuff like that and sometimes we have to let that curtain down and take care of ourselves because as long as we hold things in, the worse our health will get. Now let's talk about the effects of um, breaking up. Um, one thing is it's akin to physical pain. If you break up with somebody, you're going to feel physical pain. Um, people have done MRI scans. On people and their uh, neuroscience technology, use neuroscience technology on people who have broken up with uh, uh, their significant others, and it activates the same brain waves. That MRI MRI shows that it activates the same uh, brain waves of someone who's going through uh, addictive withdrawals from drugs or alcohol, and it's like wow, you know, love can do that to somebody. It also sends uh, signals to your body to pay attention to when you're in physical pain. You can feel the emptiness in your heart, the dopamines in your body. Um, the dopamine is a hormone involved in both drugs and addiction. And dopamine causes us to try to find the object, the love object, hence why we spend days thinking about the other person. You know, we can't help but to think about that person because we got to have that urge in our body, that chemical in our body feel, you know. It's very hard for us to kind of move on 
and we tend to idolize our uh, our exes. Uh, we distort our memories sometimes. You know, sometimes we'll be like, man, you know, things were going so great, and why did we break up? You know, you're imagining things. You know, when things may have not been so great. You no, know, it's almost like um, spousal abuse. You know, the spouse can name every good thing that the other spouse did, but in reality, they can't see that the other person was using them or hurting them in many ways. They'll tend to romanticize about the 10% of the good things the person did but look over the 90% of the bad things, the, the cheating, the, the um, being treated like less than nothing. You know, uh, it causes us to self-deprecate. Now, we reflect on the time of the relationship. It often leads us to question what we did uh, to cause the rejection, especially if we're, if we're the one that got broken up with. You know, it's like, you know, what, what did I do? Um, how, how did this happen? You know, it must be something wrong with me. The reason why this happened It's also too easy to assume that the reason our partners partner left us is due to a uh, personality or a physical, uh, fault of our own, which isn't true. It seems that rejection leads us to question the change of view within ourselves. And we start feeling inadequate you know we start feeling negative and we start being toxic to other people because of our pessimistic thoughts to our, about ourselves you know we start feeling bad about our self-worth you know so it, it goes on to saying that i'm talking about if you really really been into a real heartfelt relationship with somebody I'm not talking about something that you were with somebody for like a couple weeks. And, you know, and sometimes it's hard for that to get over with. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't love somebody hard in a couple weeks. But, I mean, we talking about something that just sticks to you. And it, it helps. It, it, it hurts bad. Um, Being broken up with is harder than you breaking up with someone. It's hard when you break up someone because especially if you don't want to hurt that person. Because that leaves you. That's, that's a real hard situation when you know the person is a good person, but you don't think the person is for you. And it's, it's kind of like a dang if you do, dang if you don't type of feeling. And it, it leaves you feeling real bad about yourself like you're doing something evil but a difficult aspect of breaking up is the notion of being broken up with by someone or imagining that the person initializing the breakup is living the best life now that you're out of the picture and i had to break that habit about myself you know i'm a divorcee and you know with my ex-wife it seemed like everything was going great for her and i'm like man she winning it you know, every time I turn around, like she winning, man. I mean, how does she get so lucky? You know, but it's, it seems that way to you because it's, it seemed that way to me rather because I'm not there in the picture. So I'm so used to, you know, my life being connected to hers. When I seen her any kind of smile or, any kind of thing that she feel like, you know, I feel like she was doing where it's like, wow, she's like winning. And I'm over here suffering. You know, the reason why we find it so much more emotionally taxing to be broken up with is that, you know, then when you break up with somebody is that it's, it's, it's a rejection, you know, it, it's hard being rejected. It's, it's hard feeling like you're not good enough, you know, and don't get me wrong. All relationships does not have to be negative now. Uh, actually, it's actually it maybe healthier for you to break up with some people 
There are some people that mean you know well, and you have to get away from around that person. No matter how much you love that person, you got to go for your own well-being, which in case me again, you know, for my own well-being, for my own mental health, I had to get out of that relationship because it was too much. It was just too much arguing, arguing, um, quarreling. I say it like that because I can't say argue, argue sometimes. So I say it was too much quarreling about things. It was too much, uh, too much name calling and put downs and things like that. It was just too much, and your mental health can only take so much. So I mean, sometimes it's best to get away from those things. Uh, you feel like you need to stay, but it's best to leave. All situation that makes you feel like you're uh, less than nothing. Um, and don't get me wrong, when you get uh, breaking up, when you break up with somebody, don't get me wrong. It's okay to feel frustration and anger. It's okay to cry. Cry. Get it out. It's okay to feel fear. You know, because it's like I've been with this person so long. And it's like, dang, what am I going to do now? I mean, like, especially if your finances are tied in with this person or, you know, uh, material things are tied to this person or kids are tied in with this person. You know, it's it's, it's fear. Is this person going to let me see my child or, you know, are we going to be able to co-parent correctly without any kind of beef? Um. You know, you lose interest in daily activities that you do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, these symptoms are troublesome, but they are natural. It's okay. But if you're experiencing these uh, a normal reaction to break up, your emotional state will improve by little by little. These things will actually go away on their own, little by little, as long as you learn how to cope with them um, the right way. While it's normal to feel sadness and pain after a breakup, you should talk to someone. Um, if you go through it for an extended period of time, you might need to seek help. You know, if it doesn't improve after a few weeks or if it starts getting worse. You know, cause it's, it's not normal for it to go weeks and weeks. You know, uh, maybe a month or so. Maybe a little after a month, but when you start going into two, three months and you still fantasizing about this person and uh, you have uh, um, idolizations about this person, you're going down the wrong road. You're going down the wrong road. Um, You should start doing better within two weeks. That's the rule of thumb, within two weeks. Not saying you're going to be all the way better in two weeks. But the process should start moving along, doing better. Feeling sad and empty nearly every day, loss of interest in activities. Um, when you start losing weight, loss of appetite, uh, sleeping less or too much, uh, constantly feeling worthless, you're slipping deeply into depression. When you start having uh, thoughts of death or suicidal uh, ideation, uh, you need to start seeking help then. And don't get me wrong. And, you know, we laugh and say, how can somebody be affected by someone that much? Um, It's easy. I mean, it's love. You know, it's hard when you make that person your whole life. And we, we, we're wrong for doing it, but we do it. You know, you know, we don't take, we take God and yeah, we say he's uh, um, the biggest thing in our life, but we'll say it in a brush over type manner, but we'll make a significant other the uh, biggest thing in our lives. And, you know, you can't trust man. And what I mean by man, we're talking about uh, women and men. And I'm not saying that don't go around thinking somebody's going to hurt you, but it's 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 uh hard when you put someone on that big of a pedestal. Now, uh, 
whatever depression goes untreated. Um, these things can turn into uh, emotional eating. Um, you have heart disease, diabetes. These things can happen. Uh, it also can cause panic attacks. Uh, you have problems um, at, at your workplace. And that is one thing that really got to me. I had a lot of problems in my workplace where I took things out on a lot of people around me. And I'm ashamed to say that, but I had to go get help, you know, and then, you know, you have suicidal thoughts. So you have to go see if you start having things for a long period of time, you have to go seek help. Now, uh, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and move into our recipes for the week. And then we'll come back and talk about how to deal with those things, how to deal with these breakups. All right, uh, let's talk about a shak uh, shashuka uh, recipe. Shashuka recipe is just vegetables and eggs. All right, all right, that's what a shashuka recipe is. All right, now what you want to start the recipe of shashuka? You want to start it off with uh, one large onion chopped. You want to chop up two cloves of garlic. You want to get some uh, olive oil. And you can, if you don't have olive oil, it's okay. You can use um, um, vegetable oil, but I'd rather use olive oil. Um, roasted red peppers. You can get them out of the jar, or you could char them on top of the uh, on top of your on uh, stove top. Uh, sweet paprika, about a teaspoon of sweet paprika, a uh, teaspoon of ground cumin, a half a teaspoon. A mild chili powder. You want to get uh, some plum tomatoes, about 400 grams of plum tomatoes, or a carton of plum tomatoes. Just say get a carton of them. Uh, a pinch of sugar to take it out of some of the acidity. And, you know, maybe four or five eggs. And get some a handful of leaf parsley and chop it, chop it up. So this is a pretty easy recipe. It's really number like pretty much two steps. So let me re, uh, remix that for you again. Say the uh, ingredients again for you for the uh, shashuka. Uh, one large onion, two cloves of garlic that are crushed. You have uh, olive oil, two roasted red peppers. All right. And like I said, you could char those on top of the uh, oven if you want to. Uh, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. One teaspoon of ground cumin, uh, one mild, uh, one half teaspoon of mild chili powder, uh, a carton of plum tomatoes, 400 gram carton, um, sugar, pinch of sugar, four or five eggs, whichever one, how many you like, and uh, flat uh, parsley. Also, uh, I forgot salt and pepper to your taste, to your taste. So there's no really any correct measurement just do it to your taste all right in a large frying pan what we want to do is we want to uh, heat everything up we want to heat that oil up in the frying pan um uh, maybe about two maybe three tablespoons you're gonna put the onion and the garlic in and you're gonna uh fry those off cook it off till it gets soft and then you want to add those roasted peppers to it all right. Next, you want to add your spices. So you want to add that one teaspoon of smoked paprika, that one teaspoon of cumin, that half a teaspoon of ground chili powder. All right. You want to add your um, peppers. I once said, I already said your peppers. You want to add your tomatoes. Once you add those tomatoes and let those cook down for 10 minutes until they start falling apart you want to start adding your sugar and you want to simmer that for about 10 minutes all right now what you want to do you want to take the back of your spoon and you want to crush that up you know and you know you want to stir it crush it up or whatever like that uh add your salt and pepper add your little salt and pepper to it if you would like to at this moment um 
Also, you can add other vegetables to it. You can add your uh, squash to it if you like. You can add um, you can add spinach to it. You can add a little kale, whichever one you like. Just a handful of kale, handful of spinach, whatever you like to do. But if you want to keep it red like that, hey, no problem with me. Love it. Now, what you want to do once you get it stagnant in there and it's cooking gently, cook it on low, turn it down. You want to um, make about four or five dips. If you got four eggs, you're going to make four dips. If you got five eggs, you're going to make five dips. All right, in it. Little holes in it. All right, what you're going to do, you're going to uh, put a lid on and cook. Uh, you're going to put your egg yolks and egg whites in those little dips. And you're going to put a lid on and cook gently. All right. You're going to cook that gently and you're going to cook them to the point to where you like them. If you like them real yolky and, you know, runny, that's fine. If you want to, uh, your yolk to be more solid or whatever like that, you know, go with it like that. And, you know, you add your salt and pepper to the top or whatever. Now, this goes uh, with some kind of crusty bread uh, with it. So use some kind of crusted bread to eat with it to sop up your uh, tomatoes and your egg yolk. And uh, what you also want to do is you want to put your parsley over the top. All right. Now, as a side to go with it. And what I would do to use with the bread, to sop it over the bread and the, uh, and tomatoes and eggs and all that. Um, while you cooking that on top of the stove. In the oven, why don't you go ahead and do your little eggplant to go with it? Now, what I would do, I would take one large eggplant or two medium eggplants. Maybe two medium eggplant. Use about a fourth cup of olive oil, a little salt, half a teaspoon of salt, a little salt, you know, a little garlic powder, and a little black pepper. All right, you're going to preheat your oven at 400. You're going to slice your eggplant crosswise, not long way. You're going to do it crosswise to make circles. You're going to make those circles about maybe a half an inch or so. All right. You're going to cut off the leaf in after you are done slicing so that you'll have uh, more to grab onto when you slice it. All right. Arrange the egg slices, I mean the eggplant slices on um, extra large baking sheet. In one single layer. All right, you're going to drizzle that with. Oh, before you put them on the uh, sheet, uh, if you have a sheet that's kind of like older, uh, oil it down a little bit or either put some sprays oil or something on there and then put the eggplants on. You drizzle those eggplants with the oil, sprinkle salt, sprinkle on the garlic and black pepper on there and flip over, repeat the same old thing. Oil. Salt, garlic powder, black pepper, and you roast that for 30 to 35 minutes until soft and golden. That you'll have a complete meal, and it's very, uh, with the acidity of the, um, with the acidity of the, the tomatoes and with the just fiber from the eggplant, it makes a very, very nutritious meal. It's a well-rounded meal, very filling meal. But, oh, and it's low in carbs, very low in carbs. Uh, this should go on your keto list if you have a keto list. All right. All right. Now, let's, that's uh, shashuka and roasted eggplant. I hope you try it out and I hope you really enjoy that. Now let's get into dealing with a breakup. Yeah, we dealing with a breakup or divorce. One key thing is when you deal with those things, when you deal with it, just recognize, like I said earlier, it's okay to recognize. It's okay to have different feelings. It's okay to be sad about the situation it's okay to be angry at the other person 
It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be confused. There's nothing wrong with being those things. That's humanly, that's human nature. It's okay. Uh, it's okay to be anxious about the future or fearful about the future. Even if the relationship was unhealthy, even if you came out of a uh, abusive relationship, it's still scary to go out there on your own. And it's okay. You're not crazy or not stupid for feeling bad, you know, feeling scared to be out there on your own because you've been one, one, one and one, you know, as one with somebody for so many years. But what I will tell you to do, one key thing to do after you um, get out of a relationship, give yourself permission to feel and to function at less than optimal level for a small period of time. You don't have to be running at all gears at the beginning. Take a break. Give yourself a break. Allow yourself to grieve and feel lost. OK, give yourself time to regroup. No one is Wonder Woman. No one is Superman. All right. Get your time to heal and re-energize. Next thing is do not. In whatsoever way, jump into a relationship with anybody. Coming right out of another relationship. Do not do that. Because what you are doing, you are bringing the baggage you had from the prior relationship into the new relationship. And that's not fair to you or the other person. You may think you feel okay. You may think you've rebounded, but you're, you haven't yet. Give yourself some time to love you, to be in love with yourself. Give yourself time. To be in a relationship with you first before you move and go on with someone else. All right. And don't go through this alone. Like, get help. You know, I know people don't like family and friends in their business, and that's fine. But someone who you can depend on that you know is non judgmental, see, can you get help? And like I said earlier, if you're feeling like depressed over, over a month's worth of time, Please go get help from a professional. All right. All right. Um, don't, like I said, don't fight your feelings. Talk about your feelings. Even if, if it's difficult to talk about them, talk about them anyway. All right. Write your feelings down. Uh, put some goals down. What are your goals after uh, getting out of the re relationship? You know, moving on is the end goal, but what are some other goals uh, that you have? You know, what are some things that you're looking to get back as an individual? All right. And remind yourself that I have a future. I'm a I'm God's child. I have a future. There is something for me out there. That's the purpose of, you know, you know, doing goals and writing down your short term and your long term goals and know the difference between normal reactions or breaking up and depression. OK. So don't be afraid to reach out for support. Don't move on so fast and nurture yourself. Pay attention to your needs. OK. Stick to a routine. And. We're sometimes when we break up, we're all over the place. Stick to a routine, you know. And like I say, take time out for yourself. Don't move on. Don't start going out. And I know sometimes you have the urge to start doing things and start drinking alcohol or, you know, get into the food thing. No, you know, stay away from all that and find new interests. What are some things that interest you? There might have been some things you were doing with your significant other. That you weren't even interested in. You just doing it just to appease them. What are some things that you like doing? You know. So. You know. Don't don't get into. Uh, all this other stuff. You know. Get into fixing you. 
All right. Find you again. Stay socially active. Rearrange your living situation. You know, hey. Get yourself, give yourself a present. Shoot. Get your nails done. You know, get a haircut, guy. You know, just looking better will help you. Self-care will help you. And reestablish trust. Depending on your circumstance around in your breakup, it can be a challenge to trust others again. But work on reestablishing trust by trusting yourself. Because when we leave out of these relationships, sometimes you start second guessing yourself. Start trusting yourself again. When you start trusting yourself, trust in God. Ask God for guidance and trusting you again. And once you start trusting you, you'll be able to trust others again. You'll be more watchful over yourself. But, you know, hey, it's a blessing. Sometimes breaking up with some people are a blessing in disguise. It's more of a help to you than a hindrance. So whether your breakup is one-sided or mutual, ending a relationship is never an easy process. If you're ever at a, cope, at a point where coping with a uh, breakup is becoming difficult, that your mental health is suffering, it may be time to see a therapist. But above all else, be kind to yourself and treat your breakup as a process. Everything in life is a process. Even the recipes I give you is a process. So don't go out thinking that out of the relationship, thinking like today is going to be better or why am I not better at the end of a first, at, uh, after the first week? Just be thankful that you're alive. Set goals. Write notes to yourself. Write a letter and, and bury it with that person and your feelings for that person. All right. I love you guys. I love talking to you guys. Once again, go to www.bantuafm.com. Give them some love on Facebook, IG, and Twitter. Hey, see me on www.bantuafm.com. Go to my Facebook page, uh, Michael Roundel, inbox me. Uh, give me some of your ideas and some of your thoughts on some things that I need to talk to you about or some recipes that you would like to know more about or if you want these recipes sent to you in written form. Hey, happy holidays to all of you guys. Um, like I said, I love you. Bye to all of you. Love, peace, and joy. And may God lead your way. <laughs>